grade faster with this and this than with this? Let's see if we can grade this Dakar race from friend Emmanuel Pagliota in under two minutes. Now, don't get me wrong, I do love having a dedicated control surface, but I found that it's faster when I don't have to move my hands around as much. The key is to use the hotkeys to change the tools and a combination of leaving your left hand parked on the keyboard while the right hand does up and down gestures to grade directly in the viewer. The left hand switches the tools while the right hand stays in place making changes. This is possible with the Cinema Grade plugin which works inside of Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro 10, and DaVinci Resolve on both Mac and soon coming to Windows. By the way, the hotkeys for changing the tools are also intuitive. For instance, E is for exposure, C is for contrast, W for white balance, and S for saturation, and so on. So let's see how fast this is and if we can finish in less than two minutes. To start using Cinema Grade, whether you're in Premiere or Final Cut, just drag and drop Cinema Grade onto your clips so that by the time you click Open Controls, all the clips are loaded into Cinema Grade. Everything is in here from start to finish, from fixing shots in the base correction page, matching them together, and finally applying a look in the final grading page. Following this guided workflow will enable you to grade three times faster. All right, let's start the clock. We'll give this first shot a good base correction by hitting C for contrast and dragging up to add contrast. The scopes at the bottom give me a visual reference of how far to extend the range. The shadows are too dark and we're beginning to lose detail, so I'll do Shift E on the keyboard for selective exposure and now I can just click the shadow areas and drag up to bring up detail in just the shadow areas. Now the sand looks overly bright, so I'll click on the sand and drag down to bring the midtones down. Much better. As a visual reference for exposure, instead of using the scopes, I'll use the keyboard shortcut Option Control F to turn on the false color feature and I can now quickly see the highlights that are blown out on the car showing as red. So I'll just click on the red area and drag down to reduce the highlights. Now I'll disable the false color feature using the same keyboard shortcut and as a final touch, to add more color, I'll hit S on the keyboard for saturation and drag up to boost the color. To check out the before and after, we can quickly bypass the correction with Command Y. It's looking great. Now we want to match all the other clips in the edit to this one. So let's jump to the shot matching page and group clips together with this first shot being clicked to designate it as our hero shot. Now when we click match shots, our hero shot is on the left and the clips we want to match it to are on the right. To save time, we can copy the correction from the hero shot to the other clips in just one click. Then just go through each shot, making subtle adjustments to match them better. In this first one, the exposure and contrast look good, but it's too saturated, so I'll hit S and drag to reduce the saturation. To quickly move to the other clips, we'll use the up-down arrow keys. In this next one, the dark areas are too dark, so I'll use Shift-E for selective exposure and drag up on the dark areas to recover the shadows. The next clip is overly bright, so I'll hit E for exposure and drag down to reduce its brightness. I'm also keeping my eye on the two scopes representing each shot until the traces match better. The sand is looking greenish, so I'll hit V for the vectors or secondary tool and click on the sand and drag to move the hue towards red. The whole image needs additional contrast, so I'll hit C and drag up to increase the contrast. On the next clip, we'll need to recover the shadow detail with Shift E and match the color of the sand better with the vectors tool. The next one looks pretty dark, so I'll hit E and drag up to bring up the exposure for the whole image. The sky is looking way off, so by hitting V for the Vectors tool and then clicking and dragging on the sky, we can adjust the colors more towards blue. The sky is also oversaturated, so I'll hold down the Shift and drag down to reduce the amount of blue. The sand also looks overly saturated, so after clicking on it and then holding Shift again, we'll drag down to reduce the saturation. The next clip just needs a slight bump in brightness to the sand, so I'll hit Shift E for selective exposure and on the sand, I'll drag up to brighten the mid-range. And for our final clip of the scene, it's looking a bit flat, so hitting C for contrast and dragging up gives us the contrast we need. Then S for adding saturation 
and then shift E for selective exposure to recover detail in the shadow areas of the mountain. So now that we're done with shot matching, let's jump to the final grading page to give this a look. Here in the looks section, we have a wide variety of looks that we can see previewed as thumbnails. I think this nice complementary look of teal and orange will augment the sand and sky and will work wonders. So I'll select it and hit accept. At first it's too strong, so in the inspector, we can bring down the intensity with the mix control until we reach that sweet spot. Although this is a nice finished look, we can add some final touches to it. Hitting Shift E for selective exposure, we can bring up the shadow areas. Then for the sand, to make it less reddish, we'll hit V, click on it, and drag it to lean it more towards orange. Then to boost the color of the sand a bit, while holding Shift, I'll drag to add more saturation. Then use the Command key and drag up or down to adjust the exposure of just the sand until we find that nice density. For a final touch of the sky, I'll click on it and drag. Whoops, I don't like that till, so I'll drag down to give it more of a realistic shade of blue. Perfect! To see the before and after, I'll use the keyboard shortcut Command Y, and time! We'll hit Apply and go back to Premiere. And now we can see the whole scene played back. Now, obviously a hidden advantage I had was that I actually designed this software, but we are constantly making improvements based on feedback. So if you'd like to give this a spin to see how it can greatly speed up your grading and let you finish projects in minutes instead of hours, you'll find a link for Cinema Grade in the description below. And when you use coupon code YouTube20, you can get 20% off your purchase at checkout for a limited time. We feature over 90 built-in looks, including film emulations, film grain, and a complete end-to-end -end color training so there's no more guesswork. You get everything you need all in one place to get pro cinema results so you can stand out in less time than the time it would take to find good grading tutorials on YouTube. For more videos like this, click the subscribe button and then the bell to be notified of our next one. I'll see you in the next video. You can make the grade. <laughs>